how to answer an exam standard question in 10 easy steps. Step 6. Now what I want to look at now is part B. We've spent a lot of time on part A, only 7 marks there. So what's going on in part B? Well, one thing I'd like to highlight is the way that many F5 questions are set up. If we see here, part A in black had the requirement immediately after A, and part B in red is then a wholly separate question. Your examiner often does this to make life easier for you. OK? So we know which part relates to which. So here is our requirement. Calculate the material labour and sales variances for May 2010 in as much detail as the information allows. Note the second sentence. You are not required to comment on the performance of the business. You've done that comment part in part A, haven't you? So all we're doing in part B is calculating variances. What could be easier? Only computations needed. What I'm thinking, if you look at the information in front of you, is that we've got to look at materials, we've got to look at sales, we've got to look at labour. OK? Four to five marks each. To me, this question is going to be a gift, if you know your variances, which you better. So, here is the narrative. If we look at the narrative, it is quite standard the way that it's laid out. Quite standard. We have the standards at the top, that's what we expected to achieve. And we have the actuals at the bottom, that's what we actually achieved. OK? You see this in every single variance analysis question. To my mind, all I can say is, this suggests if you practice your basic computations and know where to find your information, you will be fine in the exam.